everybody, and welcome to ProLine, uh, the longest-running sports handicapping show in America, direct from beautiful Las Vegas, where springtime is here, and baseball's underway with the exhibition games. It's a fun time of season. Of course, basketball is the main focus. We've got basketball news, notes, matchups. First, Jim, you're on a big roll, sizzling 15-4 and four college basketball uh, on the last 19 plays, three straight Game of the Year winners, and you had a big play at Michigan. Uh, they came through with a huge 82-70 victory over Purdue on Saturday. High rollers weekends, uh, winners all weekend on uh, UTEP and, uh, and Michigan State as well. Dave, you're right. I have uh, three packs of basketball and NHL plays online daily at jimfeist.com. It's been a great run. These plays, all three, 25 bucks. And if you missed last Saturday's Mitch Math mismatch, Game of the Year. I have a rivalry Game of the Year available along with an early bird tournament special. Just call my offices at 866-546-9467. All right. I have, uh, I'm coming up my best month in, uh, I think, probably about two or three years. If you'd have just played a flat, just a flat $100 on all my plays in February, you'd have won over 3000 And that's at a one hundred dollars per play. So in other words, the bigger plays, that's not even including for that, which did extremely well. And it's right across the board. Had a big month in hockey, had a big month in golf. These are all selections that get given out to my clients. If I'm playing it, you get it. Uh and of course basketball, quite pleased with that. The NBA is even heating up and I've got a big NBA game going tonight. In fact, NBA game of the week going tonight. Uh I've got an exclusive playing college basketball going tonight. Those are 16, 5, and 1 since we started doing them back in the football season, so don't have them on a frequent basis, but when they do show up, they've been excellent. So what I've got right now, uh, an early bird tournament special. This is through April 4th. Going to get games for 99 bucks, and that's going to include tonight's exclusive play. It's going to also include the Pros versus Joe's newsletter. We've got a lot of people signed up for that now. The way it works, we send out one at about roughly 9 in the morning Pacific time, and there's usually a couple of updates during the day or, uh, or sooner if something important breaks. And these aren't selections, but it's great information as to where the real pro money is showing up, and particular attention focused on those games where the public is on the other side. They've done extremely well, the, the pro sides have. Not, not in the NFL, they didn't, but boy, it's been fantastic in college basketball. If you want to get these on their own, you just go to my page at jimfeist.com and you can get a month for $99 or get everything for $99 here. The Early Bird Tournament Special plus the Pros and Joes. Got to sign up right away for this. This is a limited time offer, $99 at 855-472-2577. And I think you'll like what you receive. Okay, so let's uh, go to the poll question of the week. We do this every Monday on our social media networks. And, uh, and then we announce the results right here on the show. And this week, we asked which conference has the best chance of having two teams make it to the Final Four. And I think they're, we gave four choices. We left the Big East off and Villanova plus somebody else, but I don't know about the somebody else at this point. So we went with these four conferences as options. The ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, and the Pac-12. And Jim... The envelope, please, and don't pull a, an Oscars deal. Pardon me? I said, don't pull an Oscars deal here. Don't get the wrong one. Okay, well, we're going to bring out Zeus. He's going to he's going to talk about it. This is a, a little... Uh, anyway. It's a small <laughs> he, version of the real thing. Small version of the real thing. The real thing I can't pick up. He's about 70 pounds. But the uh, winner is... And, you know, I, I have to... After I'm done with this, I'll, I'll say why I think we should have included uh, the Big East. But uh, the winner is 45% chose the ACC. And I can't argue with that. There might have 10, 11 teams in the big dance, which is far more than anybody else. So obviously the odds of getting two or more teams to the Final Four is going to be that much better when you have that many more teams in there. The Pac-12, um, they got 35%. Uh, 12% got the Big 12, and 8% got the Big 10. I frankly don't think any of the Big 10 teams are going to make it to the uh, 
to the big the the final four. And I the when you look at the ACC, you're looking at North Carolina, Duke, Florida State, Louisville, Notre Dame, among others. And then you get the Big Ten, Purdue, Wisconsin, Maryland. It's a down year for the Big Ten. I agree. Now, of that group, I really only think that Purdue would have a chance. Uh, they're the only. I mean, they they're, they play solid ball, um, and I think that they have a better chance of any of them to make it. I don't think the others really do. Pac-12, of course, you got three teams there, and they're pretty darn equal. Uh, Arizona, UCLA, and Oregon. To get two of two of them in would be a miracle because you only have three teams to choose from with any viable chance. Now, the Big 12 is interesting because you got Kansas, Baylor, Iowa State, West Virginia, but I want to throw something else into the mix there. The hottest team in that conference has been Oklahoma State. Yeah. Yep. And although they lost yesterday, it was a heck of a war, and you're supposed to lose the game, and actually they did tie the spread there. So it, and that was a three-point victory for Iowa State, a real war. This team is playing really good, and uh, there's a team that could get there. So I, I think it's fair. I don't think the the Big East should have been left out. I think you have some. And then, guys, you've you got teams out there like – uh, that, that could get there too. I mean, you got Cincinnati who's playing very well. SMU's playing very well. Different conference didn't include them, um, but well, it, it's, we, it's, a, it's a good it's a good poll. But it doesn't. It's not all encompassing. I, I no, and we left out. You know, uh, actually, we left out the conference I might pick right behind the ACC. I think the ACC definitely has the best chance of sending two teams to the Final Four out of uh, out of the conferences nationally. The SEC could be the second because it's not a good conference overall, but Kentucky and Florida are really good. Uh, Kentucky obviously is always in the mix. This Gators team looks like they have the capability of making a big run. And I would agree. I mean, you, you know, it, it's you look at the, the Big East, I don't think it's inconceivable. Butler could be sticking around for a long time in the tournament. We know Villanova is, is I think Villanova is the best team in the country. So yeah, it's, it's a fun question. It doesn't, it, and that's what these are all about. These aren't really scientific, but I would agree with the uh, with the, the winner of the poll, which was the ACC at forty five percent. Dave, uh, I'd like to I'd like to jump in with something. I mean, I know that everybody's been saying that the the mid majors are down this year, and maybe overall that's true, but I don't believe there is one team in college basketball that is that outstanding. No, that you need to move aside and say, okay, they're going to get it, and I don't, I don't think there's anybody even close to that. Everybody has flaws, and some of these mid majors are serious contenders. Easily could go into the Final Four. Easily could win it all. I mean, you you mentioned Butler. I I love Butler. I love the way they play. They they play very similar to Villanova in many ways. They're deep. Solid, solid ball club, solid coaching. Oklahoma State, we mentioned, red hot team. Don't sleep on these mid majors. They could win this this year because there is no real powerhouse at the top of the pack. Yeah, everybody's got flaws. I mean, North Carolina on some nights looks unbeatable, and then you see them against that pack line defense. And Virginia went small against them, uh, and and gave them all kinds of problems in a game earlier this week, beat them by 10 points and held them to 43, the lowest output they've had since the Dean Smith four corner days, which is amazing. Uh, Gonzaga had been number one for quite some time, but they got involved in a close game last weekend against BYU and didn't know how to handle it at the end. And you look at that team and Karnowski, the big dude, uh, he's not very athletic. And against an athletic big man, which he ran into in that game, that's a, a weakness uh, for Gonzaga. So everybody's got something wrong with them. And it should make for a great tournament uh, because, to me, any of 20 teams could easily find their way into the Final Four. And, uh, and that, that should be entertaining and hopefully good from a betting standpoint as well. And if you like to bet futures, I mean, I think there's going to be some opportunities to take some 15, 20, 30 to 1 teams and have a chance to hedge off of that as we go forward. If you get a, let's say you get a team that's uh, you're getting 
40, 50 to 1. And they happen to get through the first two rounds. Well, then, yeah. Now you got some. Now you got some play where you can start manipulating your bet by going against the money line stuff and all the things that you can do. And we can teach you how to do that. There's profit opportunities, but I would say definitely this year, don't be on the short prices. I think it's a bad bet. There's no value on short prices this year. If you've got anything along the uh, question along the sports wagering. Uh, line just to drop it uh, to us we'll be happy to answer it go to ProLineTV.com uh, and Jim folks can uh, get seven days of action for free that's by right subscribing to our channel they just click on the subscribe button at ProLine TV and get a week of service for free on me plus go to JimFeist.com for free stats articles videos my free fast facts which you're gonna find indispensable for the tournaments, especially when teams you don't really know and don't really chart, it's all going to be there. And plays are there from the nation's top handicappers. All right. When we come back, we're going to look at some college basketball games, including an ACC rivalry duel between Miami and Florida State. So stay tuned. Okay, let's get back to it. And uh, let's look at Miami and Florida State. Uh, the Seminoles, they're coming off a, a game in which they covered the spread in backdoor fashion, that was a 75-70 loss on Tuesday night at Duke. Seminole is now back home in Tallahassee, where they will face Miami on Saturday. And uh, it has not been a good point spread run for the Hurricanes. They've been burning a lot of money this year, Jim. 8-16-1, mm. or excuse me, 8-16 and 16 against the spread their last 24. Not very good, uh, but still a very capable team as an underdog. And we saw them beat Virginia outright last week as an underdog. Well, it, it, an interesting, uh, interesting team. I, mean, I like Jim Laranega as a coach, but he's not had a good year against the spread. They, they're, they haven't had a great year on the road against the spread no. either. So, so, I mean, this is um, an underdog situation where they lost at home to Florida State, so it's in-season revenge, you know, in-state revenge. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a big game in that respect. But, you know, when you're talking about Florida State coming out and w winning this game by margin, I think it's going to be tough. Miami, Miami lost the other day. Uh, they beat Virginia, you know, 54-48 in overtime as a seven-point dog. But when they went up against Virginia Tech, that yep. was a perfect situation. They were coming off the Duke victory, and uh, they played very well in that game. But now they're going to Florida State, but they're getting a handful of points, and that could be margin. That could be something that you want to look for. Well, if this is going to be to me, this is going to be a battle of, of pace, because Miami wants to muck it up, play it as ugly as possible, turn it into a just a grinded out snail paced game, and Florida State, which has very possibly the most athletic team in the entire country, they want to get out and run. And the story on Florida State is that when they go on the road, they're generally not able to get the tempo they want. And when they're at home, they usually are. So I think that probably doesn't bode well for Miami here because they cannot run with Florida State. They just can't do it. And if this game gets up in the 150 range, as far as points scored, it's probably not going to be very pretty. And uh, Florida State will probably win big. Laranega is an expert at controlling pace, though. And if you look at these recent games, even on Monday, when they lost to Virginia Tech, it's a 66-61 game, he still won the pace battle. I mean, that's that's not the type of score Virginia Tech wanted. And, and I'm sure that uh, uh, they're happy with the win. But it's still, they're a team that wants to get up and down the court. And Laranega takes that away. So it's going to be, to me, really interesting to see whether Florida State can force his hand. I have a tendency to think they might be able to at home, uh, but it's probably not a bet for me, and I'll give you, I'll break it down to one real simple reason. Jim Laranega plus points against Leonard Hamilton. <laughs> uh, I, there's no way I'm laying the points. I'll, I, I, I'll just stay out of the game because I don't like the matchup, particularly for Miami, but Laranega plus points against Hamilton is a no-brainer because Laranega is a way better game coach than Leonard Hamilton. Hamilton is a heck, a heck of a recruiter. His teams are fun to watch, but 
in a battle of wits and pace in the sidelines, I, I'm not a big Hamilton guy, especially when they get out on the road. Now, keep in mind that the Hurricanes were outscored 44-23 in the second half and lost for only the second time in their past 25 home games, the first time they met earlier this year. Yeah. That was a 75-57 victory by they Florida, Florida State. They killed them, and they held the Hurricanes scoreless for six and a half minutes in the second half. Laranega is going to make some adjustments. He, he is, in my opinion, way better coach. And as an underdog, I don't want him as a favorite because I, I just he doesn't put margin out there. But as an underdog, this guy's tough. And this is a big revenge spot in state yeah. rivalry. So you got to be careful, even though Florida State uh, – Florida State might be the kind of team – that can go far in a tournament because you're going to be playing on neutral courts against teams that aren't used to seeing them, and their pace can make a difference. But uh, in this game, this is a rivalry game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, here's another one. In the Big 12, Kansas and Oklahoma State, we talked earlier about how Brad Underwood has really turned things around in the second half of the season for the Cowboys. They look like they were dead in the water. They'd lost six in a row in the Big 12, and boy, have they taken off. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. I think you can make a strong argument. They're playing the best basketball in the Big 12 right now, and that includes Kansas in that conversation. Uh, the Jayhawks are getting by, but they haven't been great. And I think with this game being in Stillwater, I think Kansas is going to have their hands full here. 27-3, and three, but I wouldn't be surprised if they come out of this 27-4. and four. I think Oklahoma State's got a really good chance to win this. Dave, you have an idea what this uh, point spread might be in this game? Any, no, any, I, didn't, I didn't make it up guess? Board, but, you know, it's, I'm going to say maybe Oklahoma State won right in that range. It's going to be in the Pickham neighborhood, I would think. And let me give you an idea what, what's going on here. Oklahoma State had the war at Iowa State the other day, and they, there's no shame in their game no. for losing that game. That was a tough one. Iowa State's good, by the way. I mean, that's another team that could go far in the tournament. They're, they're no dogs. Kansas has been money burner all year long. Uh, Bill Self, we know what he's done in these big events. You know, when he gets into the tournament, yeah, he, he wins the, uh, the Big 12 every year. It's just like, <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's kind of like the Patriots win the Super Bowl almost every year. But Oklahoma State in this spot is going to be very tough for them because Kansas just had senior night. And they have a lot of guys on this team that have been around a long time. So that was a big night for them. They came out with the victory. It wasn't easy. They were down early to Oklahoma. But that was a big night for them. Oklahoma State coming off that loss. This is a dangerous spot for Kansas. But does it really mean anything to Kansas? Not really. They're already, you know, they're going well, into the tournament. They already seed. won the regular season. Yeah. I mean, they're battling for number one seed, obviously. I don't think I don't that means much, much to these kids. No, I don't know how much that means. The, the, uh, they met once before, obviously, second time around. Good ball game. Kansas got the win at home, 87-80. Uh, that was back in January. And I think it's fair to say that things of uh, that Oklahoma State team is not the Oklahoma State team we're seeing now. They've won 10 of their last 12. And they're covering spreads like crazy, 9-2-1 and one against the spread in those games for Oklahoma State. Tough team in Stillwater. Uh, as for Kansas, you mentioned that they have not been making money for their backers. They're 7-11 and 1 their last 19. They have been going under on a regular basis, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if this turns into a, a grinder of a basketball game. Uh, you know, I, I just, when I watch Kansas, I don't, I don't see this as a team that's a national championship team. They're good. There's no question about that. I'm not knocking them in any way. Uh, They've got great talent. Mason's a tremendous player. Johnson's going to be a one-and-done. He'll be a lottery pick uh, in this year's draft. Uh, Graham is a solid guy, but they just haven't, to me, put it all together and looked like a dominating team that ought to be an easy number one seed choice. I don't see that. And I don't know that there's a great deal of difference between these two teams right now. So you factor in the revenge, the home court, uh, maybe the situation as well, not that bad for Oklahoma State. Now, the one thing that I do have to talk about is they are extremely three-point oriented. Uh, and, and, and 
and that's that's part of Kansas's game too. Kansas is the best three point shooting team in the Big Twelve. Oklahoma State's right behind them. I, if this turns into a, a long range shooting contest, that may not be the the best style for Oklahoma State. I think Underwood's going to go out there and come up with a good defensive game plan and force Kansas to do some stuff they don't want to do. Well, Underwood's good enough to do it. What a what a pickup this was for them, and what a mistake by Kansas State. He wanted that job a few years ago. They went with Bruce Weber instead. Whoops. (laughs) Sometimes sometimes not the best moves get made out there, and this was one of the examples. Uh, Too late for them to get Underwood now, although I think they'll be saying goodbye to Bruce Weber uh, shortly. Uh, But Underwood, to me, is a coach. You know, he won't get coach of the year. He's got no chance at it. But to me, he is kind of a coach of the year candidate for the great work he's done at Oklahoma State in a very short amount of time. Uh, I didn't think this was going to be a real good team this year, and they've turned out to be a a solid entry that's going to be in the NCAA tournament, and they could be one of those teams that you talked about, Jim, that's out there at a pretty big price because they're only 20 and 10. So pretty good good good-sized numbers available on them, and they could (laughs) definitely be a Sweet 16 team. I I saw them at 190 to 1 the other day. Uh, that's a pretty big number for, for a team like this. But, again, I mean, there are a lot of teams that are going to be favored over that. But uh, it's getting hot at the right time that matters. We, we've seen it before in the uh, NCAA. We've had years where there's the number one team, and you know they're going to win, and they do win. Uh, not this but, year. Uh, but not this year. That's not no. going to happen this year. It's the opposite of the NBA, where you can pretty much put the two teams in the finals right now it's going to be Golden State and Cleveland, and anything else is going to be a gigantic upset. Well, we uh, should talk about that a little bit now that right. Durant is hurt. Why not? Yeah, high Cleveland is. Knee. Cleveland I, I didn't is check pick- this morning. Uh, how significant is it? Well, I, I, the thing that I read early was six to eight weeks out. Oh. So I mean, you know, and Cleveland has picked up a couple people. Yeah, they have. I think uh, Cleveland's the favorite right now. I, I believe that well, they're going to have probably have an easier time getting there to be yep. the same as last year. Um, you know, the, one of the problems with LeBron is he's he's really leading the league in minutes. I mean, this guy's 15 years in the league. I don't know why he has to lead the league in minutes in meaningless games. Uh, you'd think they'd be saving his legs a little bit, but then again, I'm not. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't do that because he doesn't want to do that. But in any case, that's just my opinion. But I mean, you have. Everybody was talking about Boston maybe clipping their wings, but Why then Boston but comes out of the break and they're playing terrible. And they didn't do anything at the deadline. And no, I, think that, they, I think that's contributing to why they're not playing well. We'll see what happens tonight because uh, uh, the Wednesday night marquee matchup in the NBA is Cleveland at Boston. Uh, so, you know, that, that might be worth watching. But I, I got And I made this point uh, last Friday in the radio show or whatever, whatever the NBA trade deadline was that day. I made this point. I said, and I, I haven't. I, I have to say, I haven't taken advantage of it from a betting standpoint because I wasn't sure it was going to happen. It was just a thought. But this was a tremendous letdown at the trade deadline for Celtics fans, who were convinced that the team, which has an absolute wealth of draft choices, was going to do something and maybe get a short-term pickup uh, uh, with the Paul George, uh, or maybe go after Jimmy Butler. And instead, they did nothing at the deadline, and the thought that went through my mind is if the fans are having a letdown, I wonder if the players might have a letdown as well. They they think like fans sometimes, and I think the players in that team were expecting somebody to be arriving in Boston to give them that extra big body, uh, star body, if you will, that would give them a real shot to knock off the Cavaliers, and Danny Ainge didn't do anything at the deadline. Well, I guess you could, I, you, I, I don't you understand could, it. You can look at it two different ways. I mean, if, if you're on a team and you like the chemistry of your team as a player and you have good camaraderie with the guys in the, in the locker room, do you really want guys traded, gone, and bring in new people that you have to deal with, the egos and all the things that go with that? There's, there's pluses and minuses always for adding and deleting players because they are humans and their inter, interconnections are important. So I don't know. What, what happened there, and I don't know why Danny Ainge didn't do anything. Everybody thought he would. He decided not to. You know, you bring in an ego like a Jimmy Butler, uh, 
it'd be hard to it might be hard to manage. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know the guy, and well, he might the be the easiest they, guy in the world to get along with. But they, they can't. Win. They're not going to beat Cleveland four out of seven with the lineup they've got right now, unless Cleveland plays really badly. They're not. Boston's not going to beat them four times. And I, to me, I've got to take a chance and get. I would have gone personally. I'd have gone up to Paul George, even though it was a rental, because George is probably going to be in. He wants to finish up in L.A., uh, where he's from. But I'd, have, boy, I'd have loved to have Paul George on the floor in a Celtics uniform for two months. And you put him on that in that lineup. I think they've got a real chance to beat Cleveland. Uh, you got I, to, I, you I, I can't argue. Go I can't through. argue with that. But then, of course, you got to look north to Toronto, and everybody was saying they have a shot too. And then, of course. Lowry gets hurt. Oh, that's a bad and, uh, break. That's another one. And so you got you got a couple big injuries that have just happened, Durant and Lowry, yeah. which changes the scope of things. You got Cleveland, who just picked up a couple of guys that's going to make them strong, especially going down the stretch and take yeah. some minutes away from LeBron possibly. And then then of course you got uh, you know it, it just looks like a cakewalk for Cleveland to get to the final again. I agree. San Antonio is the threat to Golden State, which, you know, what else is new? And the Spurs, uh, <laughs> you know, it's typical. Nobody's paying much attention to them. They just go out there and win basketball games. And if Durant's injury takes longer to heal than expected or he's not sharp when he comes back from the injury, I would give the Spurs a shot against the Warriors. We certainly know that uh, Greg Popovich isn't going to get out coached by anybody. So it could turn out that the West ends up being more interesting. Well, it is going to. The West is going to be more interesting than the East. But maybe it's not as automatic for Golden State as uh, as some of us think it is. It, it, Dave, if 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 you were going to go beyond the Spurs and the Warriors out west, who would be your third team? You know, I I guess I guess you look at Houston. But uh, to me, you have to play more defense in the playoffs, and that's that's just not Houston's game. Houston wants to get up and down the court, and I'm not sure that you can make a big run in the NBA playoffs doing that. But James Harden. You know, he might be the MVP in the league this year. He's been just amazing. Uh, and uh, I like this Houston team. They're not playing as well right now as they did earlier, uh, however. And, uh, well, they had a big pickup. Uh, they picked up, uh, what's his face? That, um, oh, boy, what's his name? Uh, oh. I'm blanking on it, too. Uh, it, Williams? What, am I talking about? Um, oh, I've lost it. Well, Puts up a lot of points. I mean, their pace and the, the points now, the bench points and everything are going up. They're going to be tough to handle. That That is a very good choice as a third possibility. Granted, defense, they don't play a lot of defense, but they can move the ball. No, and I, and, uh, I don't think the Clippers, I just don't see the Clippers. Even if they're healthy, I just don't see the Clippers. Uh, just something is, they're just not good enough. A good team when everybody's on the floor, but not a great team. Uh, right. By the way, before we get out of here, we'll mention that baseball actually is underway with the exhibition games. In, and we talk about this in football season, uh, where there, there can be edges to be had in the exhibition games uh, based on rotations uh, that we know about in advance. Baseball lineups are out there every day. You can get them every day well in advance of the games. Uh, you can even get the pitching rotations as well for the day. Uh, uh, if you have that information, there are edges to be had in Major League Baseball exhibition games. Now, I, you know, obviously you get a lot of backups in uh, after the fourth and fifth inning, so you're taking your chances down the stretch. But to me, if you, can ha if you have a substantial advantage early on with starters versus minor leaguers or a very good early uh, exhibition pitcher against somebody who has struggled, I think you go with these plays. I definitely make them so. That's part of the service. You want to call in and get those games. Uh, however, we're not charging for the exhibition baseball. And if you want to get uh, any of my exhibition baseball plays, you can get them on Twitter. Just follow me on Twitter at Dave Coken, and I post them uh, well in advance of the games. So unlike football, we give away a little something in exhibition baseball. Uh, now, uh, we have free plays as well on a recorded message every day in gym. We've even got a toll-free number. <laughs> we do. Um, you're talking about the Vegas experts? Yes. Okay, 888-294-1970. Uh, 
888-294-1970. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jim Fi Sports. And you can get free plays by texting GAME, G-A-M-E, that's the word GAME, G-A-M-E, to 25827, and we'll send you plays each and every day right to your cell phone. All right, and I think that's going to do it for this week's edition of ProLine. Coming soon, we're going to have daily podcasts. Uh, we're going to get those revved up pretty quickly. These will come in handy uh, with baseball season starting, especially uh, uh, getting these updates. It won't be every day. We probably won't do it on weekends, uh, but uh, more than likely, almost every weekday, I'll be on, Jim will be on. We'll have some guest handicappers on. It's going to be a lot of fun, so stay tuned for details on that. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week with another edition of ProLine. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dave.